Lord, I just want to thank you for all of your goodness and kindness to us. I want to thank you for the love that you've shown to us in so many ways. I want to thank you as I look out and the sun's now shining. I want to thank you for the glory of creation. I want to thank you most especially that you sent your son Jesus to come to this world as our saviour, to live amongst us and to die a horrible death on a cross so that we might be forgiven. I want to thank you on behalf of us all for, for that, Lord, and to ask you that as we worship you this morning, you'll join our hearts together with you and together with one another. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so if Joan can stop shaking for a moment, um, <laughs> she'll, she'll move the slide. Oh, I don't want to get rid of that. Don't worry, just go on. Okay. <laughs>
Right, we're now going to read together Psalm 150. So we thought we'd we'll all read it together this morning. So starting from verse one. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise God Lord in his sanctuary. sanctuary. Praise, Praise him, him in his mighty heavens. heavens. Praise, Praise him for his acts of power. Praise, Praise him, him for his surpassing greatness. Praise, Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, so. Um, this morning, I have to say, it's one of those mornings when I woke up early, which quite often happens, and woke up early uh, with that sense of what I was going to share this morning. Uh, I was no longer feeling right that it was the right thing to share and that um, it was really important that at this point that we praise God and we celebrate all that God is doing with us and uh, I've just been overcome with this sense of, of praise to the Lord as to what he what he's been doing with us and through us in in our community and so I kind of set aside what we were going to do, chose a, a psalm of praise as the psalm that we're going to use, changed all the hymns round and, um, and, uh, uh, and pretty much started again with the plan for this morning. So that's okay, that sometimes happens. And amazingly, Lynn had apologized um, during the week, Lynn Pook had apologized that she hadn't organized someone else to do the reading. So we were doing it ourselves. So there was no one to liaise with for me to completely change the plan round, which is what would have, I'd have had to do if someone else had been doing the reading. So um, really, I, I really pray that what we share this morning, that there's a, a real sense of the Holy Spirit inspiring us and encouraging us in our walk. So let's move on to our next hymn, which is um, My Heart is Filled with Thankfulness, which very much reflects um, that, that sense of what I was just sharing with you, a heart full of thankfulness. And I hope that we can join together. Whatever's been going on, and these are challenging times for all of us, but um, when we stop and we reflect on Jesus and what he's done for us, Lord, that we, our hearts should be filled with thankfulness to him. Let's sing, my heart is filled with thankfulness. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, um, the, the last couple of weeks or two or three weeks have been um, challenging for me. They've been um, a few things going on. Um, my mum died at the end of October and in the process of sorting out the practicalities of funerals and things, I mean, I have to say, I'm overwhelmingly grateful for my mum's life. I'm overwhelmingly grateful that she lived well, um, well into her 98th year and uh, didn't quite make it to the end of her 98th year, but really she enjoyed life almost to the very end. So I'm overwhelmingly grateful for that and overwhelmingly grateful that she had a faith and an assurance of salvation in Jesus. Um, so um, at, at the same time, we've had a few issues going on in the family and, and one of my um, one of my sons has been having some rather difficult business challenges that I've probably got rather more emotionally engaged with than I should and have troubled me at night at times. So it's been an interesting week. And at the same time, all sorts of exciting things have been going on in, um, in, in, uh, from a spiritual perspective. And yesterday was a really exciting day for me. So um, over the last um, two or three months, I've had a, a new level of contact with our friends in India, its Indian evangelical team, and um, st have found myself starting to try and find ways of connecting them with churches who might be interested in, uh, in supporting their work, which is an amazing work, um, as I've said before, and the numbers are just incredible when you talk about it, but over the last sort of... Uh, 40 something years, they've planted 13,000 churches in North India, just an incredible kind of statement from nowhere. And uh, anyway, um, yesterday I'd set up a Zoom meeting with a couple of people from a, a church called Beck, built an evangelical church, which many of you will know in rugby, and um, a, a guy called Jace Varghese, who I've known for years, um, He's literally been in IET all his life because he was born uh, into one of the family of one of the earliest leaders in IET and has grown up. And he's now taking on the role of being the sort of liaison with UK churches for, for IET. So I had a call with him and, um, and it was amazing because he did a wonderful job of explaining to the friends from Beck what the mission and purpose of IET is and that their, their goal fundamentally is to take the gospel where it hasn't been heard before. They don't go and plant churches where there are other churches. They don't go and put churches next to someone else's church. Uh, and uh, actually they almost never recruit leaders from other churches. They, they go and plant churches in places where there hasn't been a church before. And their goal is always to see that church to grow and to become self-sufficient and to plant other churches yeah and that's how they've planted 13,000 churches to date through that model really if you wanted to look at what Acts 29 looks like that just for information there are 28 chapters in Acts the Acts of the Apostles finishes at 28 yeah so just to explain it's a, a sort of expression Acts 29 what's happening in the church now that's continuing the Acts of the Apostles I always find the work of IET an absolute inspiration in that you can just see this being played out in front of your eyes including the hard bits including the really tough pieces of persecution of people who are rejected from their families and communities because they choose to become Christians, of people who've spent time in prison and, uh, and incredible levels of, of suffering, but continuing nevertheless to proclaim the gospel. And as Jace, who himself would say has spent most of his life in the office supporting all of these things, he speaks very humbly as not of himself as not really being one of the frontline missionaries, of being someone who stood behind supporting and in the supply lines, if you like. As he described this, and at times with, with tears in his eyes, he explained, you know, that what happens is, people come to Christ, they form a church, they, the people in the church love each other, yeah, and as that church grows, the community changes, and um, on my many trips to India, one of my overwhelming pictures is take, being in a service in a village on a Sunday morning, a service in a village where the weather was rather warmer than it is here at the moment, it was always warmer than the weather is here at the, at the moment, um, certainly during the day, taking a service perhaps under a canopy but maybe just out in the open in the sun 
and uh, the believers coming and sitting on mats in front and they would all sit cross-legged on rugs uh, 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 on the floor in front of you yeah as to be the basis or other services were in a church building but looking at these believers full of hope and joy in their lives and then sometimes looking out at the people beyond and seeing people with despair and the difference between the appearance of the people who have the hope and faith of Jesus Christ in their lives yeah compared with those who hadn't it was visible in front of your eyes that there are there, there's a change that's taken place and not just to take change that's taken place in the appearance of people that amazingly in this country where people are, are, are downtrodden and feel so many of the people in the villages feeling they can do nothing and they can be very made to feel very worthless to see this change and to see their material well-being change and Jay spoke about a village where um, after many of the village had become Christians where just in amazing ways the village started to receive blessing and electricity and a water supply and their buildings changed and that you could see that something had happened that communi the community had been transformed and as Jace described this the um, the person one of the people from Beck one of the people from Beck I knew very well the other one I'd not met before that meeting um, who was one of the leaders at Beck he said that's amazing he said because our strap line is a church is loving God loving people transforming communities yeah loving God loving people transforming communities and I thought, what a wonderful summary of what it is that we as church collectively are called to do. First of all, we're to love the Lord our God with all our hearts. And from that love of the Lord our God with all our hearts, we're to love one another and to, share, and to care for one another. And we're to care for the people outside in the communities in which we live. And that love of God being brought from him into our communities, channeling his blessing, bringing transformation into those communities and changing things on the ground for the wider communities in which we live. That's the mission that we're, we're called to. And as I reflected on that, I, um, I was uh, just encouraged by what God has been doing with us uh, over this last year through the lockdown period and before that. And I wanted to share a, a little bit of a celebration as, uh, as some of that. Um, just before we move, move on to that, Johnny, can, sorry, there's next photo. I thought you'd appreciate the photo that's just coming up. This was from one of my trips to, to India. And um, the chap sitting there is a chap called James Seven who came on our trip with us from the church in Rugby. And this is the offering in the service. Yeah. So these are people living in the village. And when they brought the collection, um, they didn't bring money because they didn't really use money. They brought the things that they grow. And uh, at the front of the, of the church, there was uh, vegetables and things. You can see them, uh, vegetables there and a bowl to put rice in. And some people brought a cup or a bowl of rice as their offering to church on Sunday morning. And uh, just a sort of wonderful picture of people giving from the little that they have. And Paul speaks about it, about the people in, in Macedonia having given such a, to such an amazing extent that out of their poverty, they'd given to support him. And this was the heart of these people coming and giving from what they had to support the work of the Lord. You can see the pastor from this church he's the chap in the white church shirt standing up at the back there holding a book that's the the the, the, the pastor and uh, it was just a lovely part it wasn't something that was a show-off but a lovely part of their worship that they would have a, a song playing and people would come and just bring whatever it was they brought before the Lord as their offering and put it on the front of the table and no one was looking and comparing and making notes as to what people were bringing just a heartfelt expression of offering to the Lord. And then going from these things a few years ago, coming right up to date as to what God has been doing amongst us, I reflected on the quiz that we held last night. And um, Lynn had uh, Lynn initiative, the initiative from that, completely from Lynn, saying she'd seen that. How do, why, why don't we do a quiz in the village? That's Lynn Nichols. And um, 
Lynn, do you, uh, actually, what I'll do is I'll show the video next. Some of you saw this. It's only two minutes. Some of you saw this during the quiz. It's about the work of Tear Fund that the quiz was to support. And then I'll get Lynn to come and say a little bit. Makana, Dineo, Dabam. The old boots of a silver very man with your mods. The mother's mother with it. Mimba Mamma de Bureg and the Kandian Tua with Ginger Mela. The mother with the similar Jarila, away and Dinjala, Magan and Dino Soja. Zoo where they forge as Yan, you forge as the Yamadi. Mother Yama de Vola Jagija. The Kawuri, Mother Yabu was Ujija, just because of Kalavan Pantene. Because of Gandhi General and our cousin Walina and Gabi Zabanja with Yamagi Soja Yumso. Yes, I name my name at Fangava Mutipa Combatu, Ima one and yes, it is the Givanja. Tim of them from Beoja, from Buya Mukugi. A liar is in desperate situation. The men she relies on for food and income is failing again and again. To help communities that are affected by changing weather, Tier Fund and our partner, Assemblies of God, are teaching them better ways of farming so that uh, they can farm smarter. We are also teaching them business skills, beekeeping, livestock production, particularly on the goat and chicken rearing. This is very, very, very important because uh, it provides families with alternative so that uh, they are able to sell livestock or honey and then have money which they use it for when they have hunger. Can. I'd like to ask Lynn now if um, if you could just come and tell us oh, a little bit about the quiz, Lynn. Okay, so so what started off, we didn't know where this was going to go, but we, we, we put it on Facebook notice board and we ended up with 19 of 48 people, which, which was just a fantastic response. Um, and it was a good night, everybody enjoyed it. Um, it, it, it was just fantastic. Anyway, we said we said each entrant should donate one pound. So we could have had forty eight pounds last night. In fact, we had four hundred and ten pounds worth of donations. And the chapel said at the beginning that we would match it up to three hundred pounds. So as at eleven o'clock last night, we've raised seven hundred and ten pounds for Tear Fund which I just think is amazing, especially with the current economic climate and the uncertainty of our world now. But it, it, honestly, people are just so generous and it, 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 was, it was fantastic. And if you were there last night, thank you again so much. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. So um, if Jan just shares the screen again, I'll un... So just on to the next slide. There you are. Yep. So there, there you can see the number that uh, Lynn was talking about. And in addition to that, there's about eighty-seven pound gift aid being recovered as well. Yeah. 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 So in that situation, this is something where we're supporting um, other people in transforming community yeah and really that video that we showed absolutely demonstrated mm. community transformation people whose lives have been affected by global warming such that their previous farming methods aren't allowed to con aren't able to continue but being able to help them move to a situation where they can adapt and uh, survive in a in a changing world uh, we could stop and ask where are, where's our responsibility for the causes of the global warming? But that would be a whole discussion that we, uh, we, we would be a big one to start in this context. But our, 
our love for our communities, our care for our community, bringing the love of God into our community. When I wrote the words for the Elvertroff blessing that we did uh, a few months ago and that I played at the start of the remembrance uh, service last week, when I wrote the words for that, I thought, well, let's start with the words of something that's familiar to people from both churches, the grace. We, we in the chapel use the grace almost every week as a blessing as we finish the service. And um, it's used in many, many churches as, a, as it, 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 very commonly. So I started with the, uh, with the words of, of the grace and then working through the, the, um, the work of the different persons of the Holy Spirit, of the, uh, of the, of the Trinity. And the Holy Spirit, it was, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit join our hearts together in one, showering Yelvatov with blessings from our God in heaven above. Join our hearts together in love, showering Yelvatov with blessings from our God in heaven above. And um, my heart is that we as, um, we as Christians... Jan's just asking, is Lynn still highlighted for everybody? Yeah. Okay, not sure why that's happening. Okay. Okay, we'll deal with that. Yeah, we could see you, Dad. Okay, I'm not sure what, anyway. Um, yeah, so, so join our hearts together in love, showering Yelvatov with blessings from our God in heaven above, that we're to be a conduit of God's blessings. We, his people who come together and worship him, a conduit of God's blessings into our community. And so often you can find that if you ask around a community and say, what do people see as church? And I think it used to be more than it is now. They think of an organization that sets up and regularly comes and asks for money in order to keep themselves going. Yeah, and uh, that can be their perception of what church is about. And some of that is down to the sort of practicalities of um, running churches and that uh, a lot of traditional churches have old buildings that cost enormous amounts of money to maintain. And in a sense, there is a whole community responsibility for maintaining those buildings. But nevertheless, it gets perceived as um, this is the church always coming and act asking for money. But my heart, and I know, you know, be before me, the heart in the chapel has been that our, um, our mission is bringing God's blessings and bringing blessing into the community and doing things. And, you know, we've done the quiz last night to raise funds to support people in other places, to be a conduit of God's blessing out into other parts of the world. And this year, I've been really encouraged by the way that the things that God has enabled us to do. And I really believe that the Holy Spirit has been at work stirring things up. And right at the start of lockdown, we took the initiative to get the support group going. It has to be said, most people seem to be very self-sufficient now. But to start with, there was a lot of requirements for the, the support group during the, during the first lockdown. And lots of people from the village took part in that, but we were able to facilitate it. We were able to get our online services up and running and uh, people have been able to join and to take part in those. And I know many find them not as good as meeting in per person, but they're real services and places where I know many of us have been able to come and worship God in spirit and truth together. And then through the summer, we had the idea of giving away ice creams, a simple thing, just ever such a simple thing, but something that provided a blessing and both to people who came and families who came and picked them up, but also taking them to people who were isolated at home by themselves. And I've been really blessed by uh, the team of people, especially Lynn Wen and really led by Lynn, who's just taken so much care of isolated people in our community and that having the little gifts of ice creams provided a lovely way to be able to go and knock on somebody's door and say I've brought you an ice cream and are you okay and you can't hang around and talk too long with an ice cream because uh, you've got them to take to everybody else and if you're not careful they'll all be melted but to knock on everyone's door and Lynn just bless you for the uh, amazing um, work that you've done there taking God's love into that community of people home by themselves and then we had the idea of the dvds and i'm not quite sure how many people have watched dvds but again just how can we take 
stuff that we've been doing online to people who can't access it online. And if other people have got other ideas of how we can help the people who are not online connect, then we're up for doing it. Let's work out how we do it. Because that's, that's what we're here to do, to take God's blessing to everybody, irrespective of their level of technology access. And then someone had the idea in November that we'd take chocolate oranges round, that probably taking um, ice creams round wasn't such a great idea in November, but the chocolate oranges would be a good thing. And I know that, again, uh, a team of people during the week, and there's still a few to do, have taken chocolate oranges to about 40 people. Yeah, about more, than 40. more than 40 people in the village who are who are mostly stuck at home and um you know it almost almost unanimously there were one or two people who were a little proud about the idea of uh, needing to receive of being able to receive anything which is a shame but apart from that pride they were received overwhelmingly with gratitude and that sense of uh, of appreciation for somebody thinking about them and accompanied by longer conversations than would have taken place if they'd been ice cream so chocolate oranges um there's some other i won't ruin all of our surprises but there's uh, other plans in place for December and the run-up to Christmas in, uh, in from that point of view. Um, earlier in the year um, Sue Wakely at one of our church meetings had the idea of doing a Christmas post uh, of, uh, of, of us providing a Christmas postal service so that we'll deliver Christmas cards around the village at Christmas. And, uh, you know, Richard Baker has built a post box. I've seen it through the door. I've not, not, not been in when I uh, was uh, the other day. I've seen it through the door. Um, so that we'll have a post box on the chapel gates where people can post cards for the village and be invited to make donations to Rugby Food Bank um, in, all, in response for that. And then we'll sort them. And there's a whole set of people have said they'll help deliver them. Wonderful opportunity. Just thinking about what stamp can we put on them to convey the real meaning of Christmas with the, with each of those cards that goes through somebody's door and then another idea that I think it was Sue but another idea that came up just probably in January this year as we were reflecting on Christmas was wouldn't it be great to do some carol singing in the village and we in kind of February put a tentative plan together as to what we would do as a carol singing activity in December and you may um and then came March and lockdown, and suddenly all the thoughts that we had about how we might do carol singing said, OK, we'll think about that when all this has got easier. And of course, here we are in um, November, and the idea of how can we do carol singing seems a long way away. But again, actually, Lynn Wenham <laughs> spoke to me, I think, only on about the 1st or 2nd of November and saying, what about if we put the words of Silent Night in our chapel Christmas card and got um, then we could set a time when everybody could go outside and sing Silent Night. So um, I thought that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, Lynn, that's brilliant. Yeah. Um, uh, so um, but I started to reflect on it and um, my mind being what it is started to puzzle with how are we going to get them all singing in time with each other if we're going to get everyone in the village singing then how are we going to get this synchronized because uh, without a very large PA system at the chapel how are they all going to hear the same music to sing along at the same time. And um, if you broadcast the sound over the internet, as we all know from our experience of Zoom meetings, then they'll, they'll all hear the same sound, but it'll be at slightly different times. And uh, the idea of singing to that together would be really unrealistic. And then one morning I was out walking with, walk for a walk with Jan. We bumped into John Kemsley with his dogs. All of us bump into John Kemsley with his dogs and have a conversation, I'm sure. Um, and uh, John was there with uh, Joe and Eugene. And uh, John has the set, you know, thinks about these sorts of things and said, well, what about you could get it broadcast on the radio? I said, that's a great idea. If it could be broadcast on the radio, um, why not see if Radio Northampton will do it for you? I said, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. And if we did that, we could extend it to a wider area. So, um, and who's the contact? Well, Sue Baker's always talking to Radio Northampton because she's a Radio Northampton uh, fan. And so, uh, so um, had a chat with Sue and said, do you mind asking them about this? Radio Northampton came back and said, well, we could probably do that. But what we've kind of tentatively planning and haven't firmed up yet is something called Carol's on the doorstep 
which would be on um, Wednesday, the, well, probably on Wednesday the 16th of December. Yeah, so I thought, right, that's a great idea. So we got back in touch with them and said, look, if you're doing cows on the doorstep, what we need, this, is, this provides a vehicle for churches across the area to um, be able to promote something that is something that's really missing from Christmas. We've got the opportunity, not just to get a few people gathering singing carols, not just to get a few people in a church building coming in and into a candlelit carol service on a Sunday evening, but to, to encourage the whole of a community to go and step onto their doorsteps and sing carols together. So she said, well, oh, well if you'd be interested in promoting it, yeah, then, then yeah, let's see, I'll come back to you. We haven't settled our plans yet. And then, on Friday, the Friday the thirteenth, yep. Yeah, so um, the, 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 I got a, a message back from Helen Blaby at Radio Northampton, who uh, Sue had put us in contact with, saying they're definitely doing it. Yeah, it's definitely on Wednesday the sixteenth of December at six o'clock, and here's the carol sheet which we'll be using. Yeah. So um, from that. We've got this perfect vehicle for a community carol singing event right across the Radio Northampton area. Yeah. And um, we said, OK, so what we'd like to do, we, Jan and I had a chat and said, what we'd like to do is to get, make sure everybody's got that carol sheet. Of course, it'll be available to download, but we know that lots of people don't quite relate to downloading a carol sheet and singing from it. So I went and looked up how much it would cost. So this is an eight page colour carol sheet, how much we could get copies printed for for every house uh, and um, and then also to think we want to put it in an envelope an envelope with the message of all the things of, of the arrangements for for us at Christmas and our services and so on so we want to do that yeah and unbelievably it won't cost very much more to put an eight page carol sheet in a print in a printed envelope through every door than it would have done to put a Christmas yeah. card through every, not, not every door in Northamptonshire. I'm not <laughs> so encouraging others to do that. Um, yeah, but um, so um, uh, yeah, to put it through every door in every village, and I'm suddenly so excited that what we have is the opportunity in this year when the normal things that we do get closed down, the opportunity for something bigger and more special than has ever happened at Christmas in my living memory, yeah, that across the whole county we can have people in every community out singing carols on their streets, listening to the radio. Maybe you've got the radio playing from the car on the drive so that a few people can hear it. Yeah, uh, play, Singing carols together with the radio. Just think, well, I'm just so excited about this. And so I've sort of sent it to um, a friend of mine who's the vicar of St Giles Church in Northampton. I'd spoken to him during the week. And as soon as we got the arrangements confirmed, he started to put it out through their network. And really, the message is going to be to everybody to, to try and push it to as many churches as possible to encourage churches to use it. I've also heard during the week that Premier Radio, will be going to, which is a Christian radio station, are going to be using a similar program on um, on uh, on the um, uh, the Sunday just before Christmas. But I think there's something really special about tuning in and connecting with Radio Northampton and working with them on getting the whole of this area to be singing carols on Wednesday the 16th. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about um, the other ideas. I know during the week, um, Sue Wakeley sent out recipes to get people making tray bakes and that, that uh, we'll be able to use that Christmas cakes and things can be part of uh, of what goes to to people stuck at home at Christmas as well. You know, so so much opportunity to share God's love. But what has, apart from that, what has really so blessed me is this hasn't come from me or anybody else having a master plan. It's come from the Holy Spirit inspiring different people to come up with different initiatives and to see different aspects of the problem and thinking something through and saying, could we do this? 
And in some cases, like the carol, that little seed of could we put Silent Night on the inside of a Christmas card in just over a week has grown to something that becomes potentially the whole of this air, area singing from an eight sheet carol sheet um, uh, alongside the radio. How exciting is that? Our God's a God who multiplies things. And he's at work by his spirit in our community, among us, to see our community transformed, to see people excited again about the love of Jesus, that Christmas is about a saviour. And then one more thing that's happening. Lorna Taylor, I don't know if Lorna's with us this morning, I haven't seen her, but uh, Lorna um, had the idea of big Christmas decorations, uh, basically a nativity scene on the green. Um, and so um, she came and Janet had a chat with us about it and we said, oh, you know, that's a great idea, a nativity scene on the green near the war memorial. But if we're gonna have a nativity scene on the green, we could do with some shepherds and sheep. Yeah, and we could do with some wise men as well, couldn't we? So we sort of hatched a plan to say we'd have a nativity scene on the green, shepherds and the angels and some sheep in the chapel grounds and um, some wise men at the reading room. The reading room have agreed that we can put um, so the, the wise men at the reading room against the wall, not, uh, not, not damaging the wall, but in a way that they'll be fastened through to the inside of the building. Um, that we can, uh, we've got the insurance sorted out so that we've got public liability cover for it and everything. And so we're gonna have a, a life-size set of, of Bible-based Christmas decorations on the high street of Yelvertoft through uh, from early December to, to early January. So this is the church going outside of the church buildings. And the picture that I shared last week of um, it being a time where in a sense, we've got our, um, our good eye covered to get our lazy eye working just seems to me so true that when we can't do the things that we did that affected the same people and impacted the same people maybe year in year out we're challenged to do different things and my prayer is that these really impact the lives of people that would never have been touched by the things that we would have done in a normal year and that in this uh, interesting year that the inspiration of the Holy Spirit leads us to touch our community with the love of God in ways that we wouldn't have done if that had happened. Romans 8 28 says this, in all things God works for the good of those who love him. And um, I'm so convinced, not just because I believe the scripture and believe it by faith, but so convinced because I look with my eyes at what's happening around me and the, the inspiration that God has been bringing in our midst, that in all things, in this pandemic that is difficult in so many ways, God is working for the good of those who love him. And for that, I give him thanks and praise. And I hope that you really feel able in joining with me in celebrating this and giving thanks to him and, and saying, Lord, just help me join in. And when there's an idea and something, don't think, oh, oh no, well, that's silly. Somebody else is doing that. You know, doing things together and in unity isn't about all joining together, doing the same things. It's about there being more things happening and all getting behind them spiritually so that there's greater impact you know I have to say that very often when churches start doing things together what happens is less things get done because they uh they all say oh well I'm sure you've seen it uh, many of us would have seen it with joint services you do a joint service and some people say oh, I'm not needed as much that week I won't go this week and uh, do something else it's important that we keep the, the different expressions going to keep the maximum number of people involved but it's important that we're together in spirit wanting to see the message of Christmas this Christmas this Christmas of 2020 a year that many people say can we just move on to the next one no let's make sure that this is a special Christmas a Christmas when people are really touched with the message that this is a Christmas when we remember Jesus being born Jesus being born as a baby the son of God made human dwelling humbly among us and living his life, knowing that it led to the anguish of the cross and living that life and dying that death for the sake 
of a bride, for the sake of, of bringing his redeemed to him, of bringing people to him. And his desire is that none should perish, that all should know his love and his salvation. And my desire, and I want it to be more my desire and it to penetrate more of my life, is that we're fully swept up in that mission, that message of carrying the message of Jesus, the saviour, to those who don't know him. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit. I thank you for speaking through so many different people among us in different ways to inspire different things. And Lord, I pray that you'll keep this going. And that as we gathered here, people won't think, oh, I can't have an idea or somebody else is doing this. Lord, that you'll open up all of our hearts and minds to hear from you. And it may be that it's just how to bless the few people who live around us. It may be how to do something simple, or it may be an idea that other people uh, join in, Lord. But open each of our hearts and minds to fresh ways of sharing your love with the community in which we live. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Mm. Jen's going to share the screen again, and then we'll move on to our next hymn. Come on. Which is, we've a story to tell to the nations. <laughs> to tell to the nations that shall turn their hearts to the right a story of truth and sweetness a story of peace and light a story of peace and light for the darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to new day bright and Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth, the kingdom of love and light. We a song to be sung to the nations, that shall lift their hearts to the Lord. A song that shall conquer evil, and shatter the spear and sword, and shatter the spear and for the darkness shall turn to dawning, and the dawning to new day bright, and Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth, the kingdom of love and light. Leave a message to give to the nations, that the Lord who reigneth above, Sent his son to save us and show us that God is love and show us that God is love. For the darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to noonday bright and Christ's great kingdom shall come on earth. The kingdom of love and love. Show to the nations through the path of sorrow and drought that all of the world's great peoples might come to the truth of God, might come to the truth of God. For the darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to new day bright.
Lord, we thank you for the gift of salvation and we thank you that we know your love for us. And Lord, we thank you that we can love one another, that we can share the joy of giving love and the joy of receiving love. And Lord, we pray for people who find it harder to receive than to give. Lord, we pray that you'll open up their hearts to be able to receive from you. Lord, we thank you for all that we've been able to celebrate this morning. We believe there's so much more to come, but we thank you for the, the steps that we've taken, Lord. And we thank you for the inspiration of your Holy Spirit in taking those steps. And Lord, we pray this morning for Pam's grandson, Josh, who's staying with her at the moment, having uh, now being out of hospital. We pray for his continued recovery. We thank you that he's back at home, but we pray for his continued recovery. We pray for people being treated for cancer. And Lord, we pray for Anne and the, the challenges that she's facing at the moment. Lord, I want to pray for your guidance as I meet with my sister this week to prepare for my mum's funeral that we're going to take together. Lord, I pray that you would guide us into just the right, the right components of that service. And for a moment, as we all have personal prayers, let's just take a moment silence to pray for those people, maybe the three people that Ken asked us to pray for regularly a few months or back, maybe other things to stop and to pray for a few moments by ourselves. And Lord, at this time, we pray for our government. None of us understand fully what goes on in government or what it would be like to be in government. And the insides of 10 Downing Street, we see a little glimpse through the, uh, through the lens of the news, Lord. But we, we don't know much more than that. But Lord, we know that your word asks us to pray for our government and for kings and for all in authority. And Lord, we know that at this point in time, government is especially challenging. And so we pray for them as we've prayed for them each of the last weeks, Lord. We pray for them to have wisdom and discernment in making decisions for our country. Lord, we pray for those working in hospitals. We thank you for them and we thank you for the love that they show to the patients. We pray for them as this has been such a long, hard year with many hours worked for many people. And Lord, we pray for scientists working on therapies and vaccine. We thank you for the prospect of a vaccine for COVID in the not too distant future. And we pray that that will indeed become reality. But Lord, we also pray that we just don't revert as a society. Lord, that we remember the lessons of 2020. We pray for the work of Hope For and Food Bank, which is part of Hope For in rugby, caring for the homeless and for those without sufficient to eat. Thank you for the vision that came out from people in one church and spread through people in another church and was pulled together through Revive Rugby, uh, through different people in different churches, sharing a vision and putting it into practice. Lord, we thank you for that. And we pray for their continued care for those in need, especially over the Christmas period. And again, we thank you for Tear Fund, who were the um, the centre of the quiz last night and the, for, for the, the place where the money's going to from the quiz. We thank you for IET that I've spoken about in the message and for others taking the gospel to the parts of the world where we can't go. And Lord, as we've said, thank you for all that you've been doing with us this year. We pray for a harvest in Yelvertoft, a harvest of souls. 
And Lord, in that sense, we pray for our preparations for a different Christmas that we might communicate and there might be an enthusiasm for the opportunities to do special things. I thank you for all those who joined the quiz and for the enthusiasm that that generates. And I pray for the Christmas quiz that has been talked about now, that around all of these activities will be part of generating an enthusiasm for a Christmas, a Christmas based on Jesus. And so, Lord, we say together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so um, we come to our last song, Walk in the Light. Um, just a little... Uh, just a little thought. Let me bring up a gallery view a second. I think, where was Barry? I'm just going to unmute Barry a second. <laughs> Barry, we had a conversation on Friday, just before we sing this one. We had a conversation, I think it was on Friday, Thursday or Friday, when we talked about um, what does congregationalism look like in an online world? Yeah, yes. And it struck me as I was preparing this morning and thinking about different things that had been started, but from different inspiration from different people and then spread around, that that's at least part of what congregationalism looks like. In yeah, an, absolutely. In, in, in an online world. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it does. And it's ever so easy just to go on the old tram lines, do the same old thing the same old way. But COVID has opened up the door for us to think creatively and do all these wonderful things. And the Spirit of God is sweeping through, helping us. Marvellous. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Thanks, Barry. Um, let's... Um, Let's sing Walk in the Light, this lovely, lively song um, uh, led by Jackie, Johnny and the Michi, recorded some time back in the chapel. <laughs> 